we live in a time when our society is more and more shaped by the developments of its technology. We experienced the birth of the internet and how it became capable of connecting any two persons, at any time, at any place within milliseconds. Further, the internet has developed into the biggest collection of human knowledge in history and is accessible to everybody. This digital revolution has led to all sorts of new impacts on our society. Smartphones, Facebook, Google, Wikipedia, Amazon. What combines these new phenomena is that they all create increasingly personalized experiences in meeting our needs and demands. The question that arises is, what is the technological trend of personalization capable of in the future, and will it also affect the way we learn? Will it change the way we understand education? Sig Behrens, president of Blackboard Inc., argues in an article that the digital revolution will have as much an impact on education as it had on other parts of the industry so far. He makes the case that the digital revolution has given rise to what he calls the active learner, and he is convinced that the demands of the active learner differ significantly from previous learners. Active learner are students, who are often referred to as digital natives, and according to Behrens these students will confront the educational system with new demands for more open, mobile, social, and analytical elements. Because the choice of education has increased in the same way as the choice for products has increased in recent years, and because active learners are willing to go elsewhere if they don't feel their expectations are being met, Behrens believes that the pressure from active learners on educational institutions will increase. Behrens therefore concludes that universities, which will not adapt fast enough towards the desires and needs of this generation will be left behind, such as old structured companies were left behind by innovative companies from Silicon Valley. The question is, how will the education of tomorrow's active learner and digital native look like? Let us have a look. Andrew Moore the Dean of Computer Science at Carnegie Mellon said that 2016 would be the year that machines learn to grasp human emotions. In the future, I hope to do things such as go to school, study, make art, start a business. A new startup called Emotion is catching a lot of interest and is already recognized as part of a much larger trend across the industry. The company uses a technology based on what are called deep neural networks, vast networks of hardware and software that approximate the web of neurons in the human brain. These deep neural networks gather a vast amount of personal expressive information from individuals. On the basis of this information it is able to make extremely high accurate statements about the emotional state of individuals. Once you know how the face works, it's an extraordinary system, because it not only tells you who you are, but how you're feeling at that moment. It's our best window into the brain. If you feed enough photos of someone smiling into a neural net, it can learn to understand when someone is happy. Andrew Moore says, We have very real data points showing computers doing a better job than humans in accessing emotional states. So is it foreseeable that these deep neural networks will be applied in education? Will the classroom of tomorrow scan our faces and tell us whether we are learning well enough or not? Well done student 703HW5, you have understood the subject successfully please proceed to the next exercise. Will maybe an AI be the teacher of tomorrow because it is able to adapt better to the needs of the active learner? Try a little harder student 506YV73. You are about to comprehend the question fully. Or will the AI maybe never be as good of a teacher as a real person? No reason to be upset student W505X7. I know you know you have simply not studied enough. I guess we will find out very soon.